then, so Alpine got two episodes. And I also yeah. feel like AlphaTari got, like, five. <laughs> I just feel like there's yeah. so much AlphaTari coverage. And it was all talked about by Christian Horner. <laughs> like, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I will say one of the most egregious bits of like the AlphaTauri coverage was when they were doing the race stuff and they they were they were showing race footage they kept cutting to the Red Bull pit wall and yeah. giving like Christian Horner's reaction to things that were done by Red Bull drivers probably Perez um that like definitely was like was not actually like that was like Fran, like you should put cameras on Franz Tost, who I know like doesn't care because like yeah. he was retiring anyway. Um, and you know there was a lot of interesting stuff coming out of Peter Bayer that I, I do think between Helmut Marco making the decision to pull Nick DeVries and Peter Bayer, who is a brand new CEO of Alphatari, like that it make it surprises me less that they were so quick to cut him. Um, but I think it was incredibly egregious to have you know Christian Horner's in race reactions to things that he was definitely not actually reacting to well he may have been a little bit but I don't know it just makes you it makes you really sit and think how closely these teams are tied like we know Williams and Mercedes have a close relationship but it's also not like you know Toto is telling James what to do on a daily basis and it feels like just telling who who drives in your car right (laughs) exactly Um, When there's availability. But it also makes you take a step back and think, like, how much is Christian Horner really pulling the strings at AlphaTauri? How close are they actually linked? Especially because of the whole Daniel bit. Like, if I take one thing away, it's that Christian Horner loves Daniel. He will do anything (laughs) in his power to get him back into a Red Bull, like, varsity team seat. He, I feel like he feels kind of like his race dad a little bit because he started with the Red Bull junior team and he came up in Red Bull racing and, um, you know, Toro Rosso and everything. And I think Christian sees him leaving for Renault as something that really hurt. And now he's back and they get back to where they were. I really think Christian has a soft spot in his heart for Daniel Ricciardo. And I, I personally saw that it was like a little bit of a storyline, but you can see how close they are and how much mm-hmm. he wants to support him and give him the space he needs. And um, I think, I think it was Will Buxton who said that he kind of has a blind spot or a soft spot for Daniel mm-hmm. and he might let him get away with more than others, which I think is good. Cause that means he'll get more time to prove himself rather than right. just being cut like a Nick DeVries. Yeah, exactly. I, th- I think that, you know, Nick DeVries' whole story was very, like, they they could have cut the amount of Nick DeVries in half. Like, we did not need to see him cleaning his closet-sized apartment in Monaco. Um, like, we we know he's neater than Yuki. It's fine. It, it's Everyone's neater than Yuki. Um, but I I just, I really feel like Christian Horner will do everything everything in his power to get Daniel back into that second Red Bull seat. Yeah. Um, and But what was really interesting to me when they got to the Liam Lawson portion when Daniel broke his hand um, was I felt that there was an implication that the the competition for that second AlphaTauri race seat was not between Liam and Daniel, but for Liam and Yuki. Um, Cause when they, when they, when they made the reference to it being very political, that's where you have to know. And this is something that's not, you know, something that's shouted out all the time is that Yuki is actually salaried by Honda. Um, and Honda is, as we know, a very close partner to Red Bull, you know, Red Bull, their Red Bull powertrains and, and AlphaTauri, they provide the engine and all that. So basically they were not in a position to give that second seat to Lawson because Daniel was always going to stay. And it was, you know, they, they couldn't, Based based on what had happened over this you know this whole season, they couldn't sell to, they couldn't sell it to Honda to that you know Yuki was going to lose his drive. Well, and we've talked about this too. Like we've theorized and, and had our conspiracy theory about how Yuki will never leave because he's paid by Honda and they're a big sponsor. Yeah. Um, which and this, if anything, kind of confirmed that. I think it was interesting to see that Danny was 
c- very concerned about his seat. So yeah. that means, you know, I, but I, at the same time, if you, I took a step back and it didn't seem as dramatic as everyone played it out to be in the media. Like it seemed like, yes. Christian, like it was, it was not even like, it was a non-factor. Like they already knew who was going to be in the seat and it was Christian exactly. confirming to, to Liam, like, Hey, you've done great. Keep it up. You're a reserve driver. Your time will come, but like, we're not making a change. And I feel like Liam got a lot of noise from the media of like, what does this mean for Alpha Tari? Who's actually, you know, blah, blah, blah. When right. I, and the way that it came across to me was like, they already knew they weren't going to change their driver lineup. Great. He came in, he did wonderful. We've got a great third driver, you know, for two of our teams, but they were not going to change their minds or make a different decision. Yeah. Liam Lawson did his job and he executed perfectly. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, AlphaTauri Visa Cash App is just not in a position to move on from Yuki Sonoda right now. So right now, Lawson's best hope is that Sergio Perez either finds another drive or gets let go so that Daniel can move back to Red Bull and then he will go into AlphaTauri and move up into Formula One, where Lawson absolutely should be. Yeah, no, he's a great driver. I think he'll absolutely kill it in a few years. But I don't think, like, this season wasn't going to happen. Absolutely. Yeah, no, correct. It it was it was it was just he needed to be there while Daniel recovered from you know breaking his hand because Daniel's options at Zandvoort in that practice session were break his car by driving into the back of Oscar Piastri or going into a wall, and yeah. he made the choice to go into a wall. Um, so so yeah, it was good. I love that we saw um, Daniel's contribution to Mexico um, yep. because he, Mexico and his performance there that gave AlphaTauri the position that they were in, finishing P eight in the championship, um, and you know did that, that one race and that one performance by Daniel Ricardo gave them millions of dollars in prize money. And so I'm really glad of of all the little things that um, Drive to Survive did choose to include that that was one of them that they did. Um, I'm also really glad that they included the commentary from Alex Albon because that was yes. that was the cherry on top. So A plus. Alex Albon pretty much like lays out exactly how Netflix is going to show Daniel Ricardo coming back. And he's like, I'm pretty sure they had to change their pants three times when they heard he was coming back. Yeah. Um, but that just killed me because he laid it out perfectly about what was going to happen and like how they're going to cut to things. And um I, yeah, Netflix is obsessed with him. He's a great personality, though. He's great for the sport. Yeah. He's enthusiastic. He's charismatic. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think we're going to see Horner doing everything in his power to get him in, like, the the Red Bull varsity seat with Max. Yeah, that it'll be really interesting to see how how this year goes. And if if we see it, I, I don't think this is very likely, but if we see something a la 2016 where – um, you know, race four happens and um, Max Verstappen got moved up and Daniel Kvyat got moved down. I don't think that's going to happen between Perez and Ricardo where they would switch. Um, but you never know. And I'm curious to see what is ultimately going to play out. Can you imagine uh, Checo and Yuki as teammates? <laughs> I just can't. I don't I think can't that either. very well. <laughs> No, I, mean, I, again, I, think, I think I think Corner knows that too. So yeah. the only way this happens is they cut Checo or they say like, hey man, you're getting up there in age. I think you should retire. And they just like kick him aside and then Daniel moves up and Yuki gets Lawson or someone else. But I don't see him. I don't see Checo going down to uh, whatever they're called now. V-carb. V-carb. Yeah, no, I, I don't either, but it will be interesting to see how it shakes out and when when these announcements for 2025 are made because that's going to be, you know, the top thing on everyone's mind.